What is happening everyone, welcome back to another video and today we are reviewing the Teclast F7. So, let's get right into it. So currently the F7 is actually on sale for about 280 US dollars and that's actually a pretty good price. So as always, it's a full aluminum body, it's a 14 inch display, 128GB SSD or EMMC of 64GB but the 64GB EMMC version of this is actually discontinued. So what we have here is the 128GB version. Alright, so here's what it looks like. This is the back and this is what it looks like on the inside of the back panel. We get some cutouts here and whatnot. So here's what the inside looks like. As you guys can see, the battery is massive compared to the motherboard and that's when you know that you're going to get some pretty decent battery life, which we will be talking about in just a bit. Under this copper piece right here, we have the 6GB of RAM, the N3450 CPU and pretty much most of the components. Over here we have the Intel AC Wi-Fi chip, which gives us some pretty good Wi-Fi. And finally, right over here is where you can install your M.2 SSD. Now you saw me taking this out, but this is actually not the one that came with this laptop. Instead, this is the one that came with the laptop. Now you're probably asking, why am I using this one instead of the one that came with it? Well, actually, the one that came with it, which happens to be a Teclas branded SSD, has actually been failing quite often when I use it. What happens here more often than not is that it freezes. Now, they do have some warranties, but of course that is going to take a while and it's going to be an annoyance. That is something you should keep in mind. What a great way to start a review. It could be just my luck, but that said, something you'll notice about this thing is that it's got really chunky components and it makes it look like a really old first gen SSD when it really is not. Maybe it is, I don't know. But that said, you can see how thick it is. It is just massively thick. And I actually took this one out from the EasyBook X4. And this one did not fit back in there because it was way too thick and um, that's that. So yeah, keep that in mind that the SSD that comes with this thing may fail on you. So moving on. A quick look at the sides here. We have a full size USB 3.0 port, a micro HDMI port and the charging indicator that's on the opposite side where we can find on the right side the charging port, the headset jack, another full size 3.0 port and the micro SD card slot which of course runs at 2.0 speeds. So let's go ahead and open it up. First, can we open it with one hand? Not really, kind of. You have to just wiggle it, just as always. Which begs the question, why did all these laptops open up and close the same? If we go ahead and roll back this video to where I opened it up, there are always these two spots in many of the laptops that open up that look like this. There is some spacing, and I'm guessing that space is for weights, where you can actually have the laptop be more front heavy, so it makes it easier to open up with one hand. So that said, you can expect a video about that, hopefully somewhere in the future, where we can try that out and see if that is the case. That said, as you guys can see here, the display is pretty shaky if you shake the table. It's not as bad as you think, it's just that this table is pretty wobbly, but if we go ahead and shake that, it does stop pretty quickly, so that is good. It's just that this table has a lot of rebound, so the shake just keeps going. Now something you may notice here is that the display here is pretty glossy. Now on their website they actually advertise it as a glossy and then in brackets a matte finish. So it's a semi matte semi glossy display and if you're wondering yes this does come with a screen protector. Now the one that I have here actually came in a bit scratched up if we take a closer look at that. So as you guys can see here that these scratches here are on the screen protector itself and if you go ahead and take the screen protector off which is sadly pretty nicely applied it reveals an even more glossy display, which means this screen protector here is what they mean by a matte finish. Let's go ahead and take that apart. Boom. Yep, the display here is now like a mirror. Check that out, you can see everything. Hey. Now moving on, what we have here is a 14 inch 1080p IPS panel and it is actually pretty decently bright, brighter than most IPS displays that we have seen thus far for these type of laptops. And what I mean by these type of laptops, I'm mainly comparing them to the EasyBook series. Now under the heavy lights that I currently have, the screen is still very visible and I gotta say, it looks really beautiful with the glossy finish. But of course, you got the compromise of glare. So if you wanna do some Photoshop work on this thing or watch a movie with headphones or an external speaker, then this thing will definitely satisfy you. Now moving on to the I.O. here, we have the keyboard and the touchpad. Now the keyboard here is as always, very simple, straightforward. It's got some pretty nice travel distance. It is pretty well spaced out. And overall, you're not gonna have much issues with this keyboard. It's gonna get the job done and it's gonna feel good once you get used to it within five to 10 minutes. Here's a closer look at what it looks like. We got the media keys up top here. We got the FN key right down here, the arrow keys, page up, page down, home and end, and all that good stuff. And here's a quick sample of what it sounds like. Back to my old desk. 
Now, something I've noticed that not many reviewers out there talk about when reviewing these type of laptops is that they don't talk much about the touchpads and how responsive they are, if there's any latency, and how accurate they are in overall use. Usually, you'll see them gloss over it and talk about how they have Windows Precision drivers and all that good stuff. But in my experience, these Ultrabook laptops, they all vary very much, even though they look the same, in touchpads. So this touchpad here is an exception. It's not that bad. It's actually very accurate. It's very controllable. Fine movements will work. And overall, it will get the job done without any issues. Yes, it does have precision drivers. And overall, it will be a satisfying experience to use the built-in touchpad and not be frustrated to the point where you just want to throw the laptop out or use an external mouse. So it's something that we take for granted, but it is here and it does work fairly well with this laptop. So yeah, you can move around very quickly from edge to edge with the default settings. You have all the shortcuts and all these gestures they can turn off in Windows, which is nice. And overall, if you do any fine movements like this, if you want to do some Photoshop and whatnot, this touchpad is going to do just fine. And yes, this touchpad does have buttons right here. Two-handed operation actually works fairly well. I can drag and move around without losing any tracking, any glitching whatsoever. I can easily drag files all over the place and not have to worry about it stopping midway or having to activate another function because I thought I was doing something else. Nope, this touchpad will work perfectly fine, just like you do with old laptops that had actual dedicated buttons on the bottom. So in the end, the touchpad to keyboard combo, I give it a big thumbs up. Moving on to the benchmark, starting off with Cinemabench R15. Here are the scores. We got 161, which is pretty much on par with the N4100 Gemini Lake CPU that we have reviewed in the previous video with the EasyBook X4. So these two generations, so far, we haven't seen that much big of a difference. And with the OpenGL GPU test, we got 16.5 FPS. Moving on to the SSD performance, the numbers are pretty good. They work, it's an SSD, and the numbers here do match up with an SSD speed. So overall, the SSD speeds are pretty good. And finally, for the Wi-Fi test, we are running at 5 GHz AC Wi-Fi, and these results are in the same room as the router. And we get a maximum speed of around 125 megabits per second, with an upload speed of 16. So this is my maximum upload speed, and my maximum download speed would actually be on around 180 megabits per second. So you can see the difference here between getting this laptop and getting a high-end laptop. These are the results that you can expect. That said, the performance here, when we go ahead and move 50 feet away with two walls in the way of the router, here's the performance that we can expect. So the latency is still pretty good, the down speed hasn't dropped a whole lot, and the upload speed has still maxed out, which means this laptop is pretty great around the house. So overall, this thing is gonna give you some really good Wi-Fi performance. Now moving on to gaming performance, we can see that it's actually playing very well, especially with Rocket League. Right now we have it at 720p with the lowest settings. And overall, as you guys can see, it's very playable. Even though you're getting like 38 FPS, 42 FPS, the game is absolutely playable and I would definitely be enjoying this game if this was my only laptop that I could play games on. It's not bad at all. It very much reminds me of the EaseBook 3 Pro, which had similar performance. And I gotta say, overall, uh, Rocket League is definitely playable at the settings, 720p, lowest settings, and uh, with that said, let's go ahead and see how CSGO performs as well. Now, taking a look at CSGO, running at 4x3, 224 by 768 with the lowest settings, and this is the performance that we can expect. So we're getting around 40 FPS, and we are getting some hiccups here and there, and they're pretty bad when it hiccups. So the game here really isn't all that playable, just like it is on Rocket League, and of course it's going to get worse or better depending on what map you play, but this is what you can expect on average around 26 all the way to 40 or 50 FPS in some cases. Would I say CSGO is playable? Not really, unless you want to drop the settings even lower and try maps like Crack House, which is actually pretty good. It's lightweight and it works pretty well with a lot of people. So the more players you got on a server, the game is going to lag even more. And finally, here we have Risk of Rain running at full 1080p with 60 FPS. It may drop to 58 every now and then, but overall the gameplay experience is very good. And that is obvious because this is an optimized indie game and it does not have a whole lot going on. So in the end, it is going to work very well if you try to play lightweight games like these. So if you want to play games, you're mostly going to be limited to Rocket League, optimized games that are old, and of course, indie titles that are lightweight like this one. 2D fighters are going to work as well. And most old racing games are going to work very, very well because they're very optimized for low end hardware. For example, Grid, Dirt Showdown, Blaze Blue and Super Street Fighter 4. A quick look at the temperatures here, we can expect around 40 degrees Celsius on the surface of this laptop. As for the bottom where the CPU is, it's pretty much the exact same story. It's also around 40 degrees Celsius. But yeah, it does get warm, so during the winter, it's going to be a pretty nice thing to have around. Now, if you want to watch videos or movies on this thing, then you can have a pretty good experience for the most part. Everything is going to look very nice and vibrant, and overall, the colors are going to look beautiful. The display here, it's a 1080p panel, 
but it is glossy. So if you are inside a very bright environment, then you can expect a lot of glare. And of course the display here isn't as bright as other laptops, like in the $600 range, but it does get the job done as long as you don't have very bright lights around you or just turn off the lights altogether. That said, the speakers here are not as good. They do distort. And for how long you can watch videos locally on this laptop, you can expect around four hours of video playback. So here's a sample. So the conclusion, would I recommend this laptop considering the issues that it has? Well, it has a fantastic screen, but it's glossy, it's very nice and vivid. The keyboard and touchpad combo is fantastic, with the touchpad being very responsive and precise, which is a big plus. The battery life here is pretty decent, but the speakers here do distort. But this laptop does utilize the full power of the N3450 by disabling the power limit in the BIOS, just like we have seen before on the EasyBook 3 Pro. And considering that it's going around for $280, then yes, I would actually recommend this laptop. But again, keep in mind, my two major issues with this laptop are the SSD, it failed on me, but I might be the only person that has that issue. And two, the speakers here are not as good as they could have been. So let me guys know what you think about this laptop. It's actually pretty great. It is very powerful, very responsive because I definitely like the touchpad and keyboard combo, which is something we take for granted on some laptops. But yeah, those are the pros and cons. Let me know what you think in the description below. And that is all for this video. So thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe if you like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.